you have your Bibles, please stand in reverence to God's word and turn with me to the book of Matthew, the 14th chapter. Thank you, Lord. Matthew, the 14th chapter. My God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. When you have it, please say amen. amen. And the word of God reads in Matthew chapter 14, starting at verse number 22, reading from the New Living Translation. It says, immediately after this, Jesus insisted that his disciples get back into the boat. I mean, get in the boat and cross to the other side. This is after Jesus made this statement after he and the disciples fed the 5,000. And then he said immediately after this, Jesus insisted that the disciples get back into the boat and cross to the other side. Somebody say crossover. Crossover. My God. Thank you, Lord. While he sent the people home, verse 23 says, after sending them home, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. Night fell while he was there alone. Meanwhile, the disciples, verse 24 says, were in trouble. Hmm. He's praying, crossover, he goes and pray. The disciples is in trouble. Soon as he leave their presence, he's in trouble. They in trouble. <laughs> Lord, whatever you do, don't leave me. Thank you for that revelation. I need God with me every step other way. Mm. The disciples was in trouble far away from the land for a strong wind had risen and they were fighting heavy waves. About three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them walking on the water. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. In their fear, they cried out, it's a ghost. Quit letting people tell you why you wait till you get in trouble to talk to God. Verse 27 says, but Jesus spoke to them at once. Don't be afraid. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. He said, take courage. I am here. Then Peter called to him, Lord, if it is really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. Yes, come. Yes, come. God is still with that same clarion call. He's telling the church tonight to come. Yes, come, Jesus said. So Peter went out over the side of the boat and walked on water towards Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind and the waves. He was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. He didn't speak in tongues. He just said, save me, Lord. Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. You have so little faith. Jesus said, why did you doubt me? I'm going to stop right there. Father, thank you for the few minutes. Increase our belief system. Shift us as we cross over and go up the mountain. Don't let us look to the hills and not let us allow us to travel up the hills. Don't let our mm, focus be in Canaan, but our mind in Egypt. Cross us over, Lord. Cross us over, Lord. Remove the fears. Speak prophetically into the body. Thank you for this presence. Ah. Thank you, Father God, that our hearts is prepared to receive impartation. We got an open heart. Let the heavens be open above our heads. Save somebody, deliver somebody, encourage somebody, heal somebody, Father God. Mm. Bring clarity to the decisions. You know everything that people have said to you in private. They need answers. Speak through me. Bring fresh revelation. Fresh, fresh revelation. In Jesus' name I pray. Let the body say amen. You may be seated in God's presence. In this passage of scripture, we find the disciples, church, trapped. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever been trapped before? Come on, y'all talk to me. Have you ever? Amen. They are trapped in the grip of a fierce storm. Mm. They find themselves in this storm because they have been commanded mm, by the Lord to cross the Red Sea. I mean, cross the Sea of Galilee. They've been commanded by the Lord to cross the Sea of Galilee. Now watch this. These men are in the will of the Lord. And yet we see them struggling 
against the storm. So just because you're going through stuff don't mean you're in sin. Sometimes storms and trials will, 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 will tell people that you are in God's will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The disciples was in the Lord's will, and yet they were struggling, uh, oh my God, against the storm. These 12 men are stuck in a storm and are unable to get out. Have you ever found yourself in a place like that? Well, you feel like I, I, I can't get out. Oh, my God. I guess I'm the only one. I guess I'm the only one. I guess uh, I've got a lot of Pharisees and scribes and Sadducees in the house of the Lord tonight. They ain't never been through nothing. Mm. Oh, my God, my God, my God. Mm. No matter how hard you try, no matter what you do, it seems that you cannot make any progress. While the storms of life are never pleasant, church, mm. they do produce certain benefits in our lives. I'm going to repeat that. While the storms of life does not seem pleasant at the time, they do produce certain benefits. Thank you, Holy Ghost. For our lives are in our lives. According to Hebrews 12, 11, it says, no discipline seems, my God, enjoyable while it is happening. It's painful. But afterward, there, is, there will be a peaceful harvest of right living. For those who are trained in this way, trained from what you are going through, trained by what you are going through, trained by storms, trained by circumstances, trained by situation. God uses those type of things to train his disciples. Mm. Oh, my God. So do, don't you know what kind of, do you not know what kind of storm you are facing this evening? Do you not know? Do you not know? Or even do you know? Do you not know or do you know what type of storm you are facing this evening? Because every last one of us under the sound of my voice is facing some type of storm. Be it financial, be it mentally, do be it marriage problems, kids problems, bank problems, credit problems. And if you are being effective for God, you will be facing some type of storm in life. Mm. So put point number one on the screen as I begin to teach the body of Christ tonight. I'm excited. The title of this message is, message is The Blessings in the Storms of Life. So much is going on in the body of Christ, at going off of Christ Church and around. You remember I deal with people not only in Oklahoma but also in other various places. My God, I communicate with a lot of people. There's people that reach out to me on social media. My God, asking questions about different things, asking me my advice, my pulse on what do I see God doing in the earth today and so forth. So there's a lot going on up close and abroad. But I want you to understand that I just come to realize that even in the midst of a storm, God has a way of speaking. And I'm going to quote Bishop T.D. Jakes, and he says, even in the moments of your greatest anguish, you often find unexpected blessings. I need you to shift your mind tonight because a lot of us, my God, some of us may be bitter instead of better because of the things that we're going through. Some of us been in such storms for so long, but we got to ask ourselves, is it God sent or is it will God use it? Because some of us is in storm because of choices and decisions that we continually make that God told us by now we should stop making. And so things is not getting better, my God, but we want to blame the enemy. I want to blame another person behind something that we are causing. Truth be told, my God, if the storm, my, if you are in a storm and, you, and it's not because of God, my God, you determine how long you stay in a, in a storm. If God causes it, he determines. But if you are causing it, you determine Oh, that was heavy right there. <laughs> that was heavy right there. See, see, that's revelation right now. If God calls you to be in a storm like he did the disciples, he determines when you come out. But if you and I are causing because of wrong choices, then we determine when we come out. Mm, mm, mm. So number one says, my point number one says, storms are God's means of transportation. I like this. The very thing that, my God, the disciples feared. The sea is what they feared, was the very thing the Lord used as the vehicle, church. Think about a vehicle that got you here tonight. It was a vehicle to reveal himself unto them. Notice that Jesus came through the night. Oh, we always look for him in the light, but he showed up in the night in the story. So write down A up on the point number one. He comes in the darkness. I want to talk to you tonight. 
Some of y'all need to quit looking for him in the light and look for him in the darkness. You can write this down. God does his greatest, some of his greatest work in the valley. You can write that down. God does some of his greatest work in the valley. Uh, my God, yes, yeah, where preparation truly take place at. Uh, my God, we can want something that we ain't pray. Uh, 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 we can want something that we're not ready for. That's right. You got to be groomed to go up the mountain. Mm. So he comes in the darkness. The Bible says that Jesus came to them in the fourth watch. Sometime between, my God, the scholars say 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. During the darkest night of the hour. Oh, my God, do anybody in heaven, anybody ever experienced some dark nights? And some of us is in the dark right now, but God is coming. God is coming. I'm going encourage you. God is coming. Remember the title of the message is, my God, the blessings in the midst of the storm. The blessings in the storm. The blessings in the storm. God is coming to you in your darkest hour. Don't turn your back. Don't quit. Don't tap out because it's dark. Don't tap out because you're going through a storm. My God, remember, if God allows you to be in a storm, he got a purpose for the storm. Mm. You may be walking in darkness this evening and questioning, where is Jesus? Oh, my God, I've been there and I'm there now, my God. You may be facing some of the darkest days of your life, but let me remind you of what the scriptures say in Hebrews 13, 5. The word of God says, I will never fail you and I will never abandon you. My God, we have to believe that and quit quoting that. God said, I will never leave. Some translation say, leave you or forsake you. And my, my God, New Living said, I will never abandon you. God is right there with you. My God, God is ready to show up and do whatever it is that you need him to do as long as it's in by faith. The only thing that moves God is faith. If you, are you praying in faith? Are you waiting in faith? My God, we want God to do everything, but we ain't got no faith. We doubt everything. God is right there amongst you and I. He's right there waiting, my God, for you to give him an opportunity, my God, to move. You got to activate your faith. You got to release, my God, the angel that is assigned to your life to work on your behalf. Yeah. Oh, my God, somebody give God a hand. He said, I will never leave you nor abandon you. I know that to be true. Them is just not the words that come out the Constitution because I was walking all up and down them streets, my God, doing my form of life. My God, he was right there. He kept a whole lot of bullet shots, my God, from hitting me. He kept things that, my God, happened to somebody else that should have happened to me. He was right there with me because I had a praying grandma. I had a praying cousin. I had a praying auntie. I had praying teachers, my God, just like you do. My God, right now, God is walking amongst you. Right now, God is right there waiting for you to give him an opportunity, my God, to show up, my God, in your darkest hour. I said, God is waiting on you. And I right, to give them an opportunity to show up, my God, in your darkest hour. Are you going to allow him to move? Are you going to allow him to move? Are you going to keep him handcuffed? Don't you know according to the kingdom constitution, you got to give God legal permission to operate in your life? God is not going to go against your will. I'm heavy. Y'all better catch me. My God, God's not going to go against your will nor my will. You got to give God permission to do anything in your life. Did you catch that? So you need to be right down, God, I give you permission to ac occupy and ac activate my life. Occupy and activate my life. Occupy and activate. Move me to another level. Move me up the mountain. You give God that permission. Will you do that tonight? And remember that he will never leave you nor forsake you. According to 1 Kings 8 and 12, it says, Solomon prayed, oh, Lord, oh, my God, oh, Lord. Somebody say, oh, Lord. You have said that you will live in the thick cloud of darkness. 1 Kings 8, 8, 12. You said you will live in the thick cloud of darkness. That's why I thank God for the word of God. Everybody look for God in the light. Everybody look for God on the mountain. Everybody look for God in, in all the, the good times. Why can we don't look for God in the dark? Why can we don't look for God in the circumstances and situations? Why can we don't look to God when it's tight? How come we don't look for God when we turn it around like this in the spiritual realm, trying to figure out where is God? Uh, why come we don't look for God when, you know what I'm saying, uh, when we saying, God, why me, instead of saying, God, use me? Yeah. See, I'm trying to shift you and understand that, my God, you got to look for God even in the dark. He ain't going to always be in the light. He ain't going to always be in the wind. <laughs> uh, he came to them in the midnight hour. Late, late, early morning, rather, my God, between 3 and 6, the Bible says. And so, my God, uh, uh, he lives. Somebody say he lives. He lives. In thick darkness. That's what the Bible say. Some of y'all never knew that because you didn't read it. If you read 1 Kings 8, 12, it'll say that. New Living Translation. I'm going to read it one more time. Then Solomon prayed, O oh Lord, <laughs> you have said that you would live in a thick cloud of darkness. 
How many of y'all remember what the title of the sermon is? What's the title of the sermon? Is anybody in a storm? Do anybody's storm feel like and look like darkness? God just gave you a promise and said that I'm right there. Right there amongst you. Ready for you to use me to help you in this storm. I'm taking my time and being simplistic as I can. God is right there, ready, in your circumstance, in your darkness, whatever situation you're dealing with, ready for you to release him to operate in your life. God has given you and I authority. <laughs> so you got to learn how to use it. Mm. Write this down up on the point number one. He comes, my God, in the face of disaster. Have anybody ever experienced a disaster? Okay, let's go a little deeper. The disciples, were, the disciples were in a fight for their lives. According to Mark, my God, 648, he saw, my God, that they were in serious trouble. God sees you. God ain't forgot about you. God knows everything that's going on in your life. You have to believe that. Remember what I taught y'all, that God created your purpose, and then he, went, then he went back and created you for your purpose. Let me say that again because I caught some people slipping. God created your purpose, and then he created you for your purpose. So that means everything that goes on in your life and my life is not going to catch God by surprise. It's part of the plan to help you fulfill your purpose. <laughs> Mm, mm, mm. So God sees your trouble, he sees your struggle, he sees your storm, he sees your circumstances, he sees your marriage, he sees your children, come on, he sees your husband, he sees your wife, come on, he sees your mama, he sees your father. Okay, y'all with me? Y'all with me? Okay. Mm. He also sees us roaring hard and struggling against the winds and the waves of life. About 3 o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them, the Bible says, walking on the water. He intended to go past them. There are times when we feel like we have lost the battle with our storms. Is that anybody? But may I remind you that just as surely as the Lord is in control of your blessings, <laughs> he is also in charge of your storms. See, 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 it's one thing I have found out, my God, in my tenure with the Lord. Can you, can you praise him in the front of storms? Yeah. Some, the Bible says, see, let me, let, me, let me help the church. See, the Bible says it was good for me that I was afflicted. Yeah. It was good for me that I was afflicted. See, we don't see affliction as good. Right. We don't see trials as good. But trials benefit you, my God, when, God, when you submit to what God is trying to do in your life. It was good for me yeah. that I was afflicted. The Bible says every, watch this, watch this. The Bible says every good and perfect gift come from above. Yeah. See, we don't see trials as a good and perfect gift yeah. because it brings a level of pain. Mm -hmm. Trials brings a level of discomfort. Yeah, yeah. But you need some of that. Sometimes you got to be shake, shook because we get too comfortable. Yeah. We get too religious. Come on, somebody. We get, to, we get too familiar with the familiar, my God. The God said, I got to shake this thing up, my God. I got to send a storm. I got to send a situation, my God, because you're getting too comfortable, my God. You have lost your pursuit, my God. You have, your hunger for me has diminished, my God. Your focus ain't lazy no more, so God, I got to send a storm in your life. Mm-hmm, mm mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. God know how to get your and my attention. Mm. Yeah, 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 God is with you, God is with you, even in the midst of the storms. Mm. He may not keep you from going into a storm, but he will, he will keep you in the midst of the storm. Don't miss that. He may not keep you and I from going. He knew, he told the disciples, get in the boat and cross over. Then the Bible says he went off and he went up there to pray and to relax. And they down there struggling for their life. You think God didn't know that they was going to do that? That they was going to go through that storm? You think God don't know you going through what you going through? See, some of y'all, my God, y'all may think, uh, he, he, God knows. Just let me say it like that. I got to be careful. God knows. I'm looking at some of y'all. Come on, somebody shake yourself. I know the Spirit of God has said a lot, and your mind is all over the place. I feel you. Bring your mind. Don't let the enemy cause you to be scattered in your mind, and you miss revelation. Come on, bring your mind in. I'm pastoring you. Bring your mind in. I'm looking at you. Shake yourself. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Think of the three Hebrew boys and what they had to go through. 
God did not prevent any of them from going into the storm, but he saved them in the midst of their storm. I want to say this, and I love the flow. Unless some of us go through the things that we're going through, we'll never learn God's ways. Many people know God's word, but have you knowing God's word, have it transcended, transitioned, I'm sorry, to you learning God's ways? Do you know God's ways? Have you ever seen God move in the midst of storms? Have you seen God do the impossible? Have you seen God take your life or somebody else's life that you thought was impossible to save and save it? Have you seen God bring deliverance? Have you seen God give you favor with the judge? Did God deliver you from the addiction? Did God put it back together? See, I'm saying all that, my God, because there must opportunities for God to reveal himself to you. What you doing with it? How are we learning from the things that God is doing in our life? You said you are grateful, woman of God, because you had a car to drive to church. You had a job to go to. So you begin to magnify God in the house of the Lord, learning his ways. When we are comfortable as men and women, and there's many ways to express your love for God. I'm not saying you got to be standing up, running around, jumping and shouting to be praising God. But when you're sitting in the presence of the Lord like we are tonight, and we sang in a song called, Thank You, Lord. <laughs> Something is wrong. When we can't set our mind, as Paul says, on the goodness of the Lord. When, 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 when you say, thank you, Lord. See, see, that ought to resonate within you. Even if you ain't been going hard for God, even if you barely even, you might not even be saved, but you got enough to know, say, thank you, Lord. Mm, mm, mm. And so God will look at a heart like that and say, that person need a storm. Because, and I don't mean in a bad way, because that person just might not know my ways. Ah, it may be time for me, just a strategic time to reveal myself to this person. And so, therefore, uh, I, can't get, I, can't get, I can't reveal myself on the mountain, so I got to send him or her, my God, a storm, so I can show him or her who I am. And then the next time they come in the house of the Lord and somebody say, and she's saying the song, think, if he don't get up, they're going to be doing this right here. <laughs> yeah, my God, they might be doing this right here. See what I'm trying to say? Because sometimes God is very strategic to shake and get a person's attention. One of the assignments of going off for Christ is to build lives, build people and change lives. So you cannot be afraid, pastors and ministers, to let the Spirit of God lead you and speak what he's saying. Yeah. Yeah. Never allow yourself to be dominated by the opinions of people, but be dominated by the Spirit of the living God. Yeah. Yeah. Obey God. When you're trying to be popular, you be careful for what you say. When you're trying to be effective, you submit to the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Point number two, storms are going to test us. Storms are God's way of testing us. I love the flow. Storms. Look at your neighbor and say, are you being tested? Come on, look at your neighbor and ask yourself, are you being tested? See, some of us really don't, haven't tasted. Some of us haven't really tasted the goodness of the Lord. We really don't know God's ways. So up on the point number two, write this down. They reveal the Savior. Let me get going and get y'all fired up a little bit. When Jesus, did, when, when Jesus did come walking on the water, the disciples did not recognize him. Is it possible that we are so 
is, is it possible? Let me, let me ask a question. Is it possible to be so insensitive to when the presence of the Lord has showed up, you don't even know God is there? You mean to tell me some people that has walked with God for any length of time, brother Christian, that no matter, we may be in a storm, but we can't find no reason to give God some glory, even though we may be going through all type of hell in our life, all type of trials and tribulations, but we can't find no reason. Uh, my bishop, Bishop McIntosh, told me that he said, he said, I can walk into a Catholic church and find God. When your spirit is alive, my God, when you are in connection with, when you connected to the source, <laughs> Oh, uh, my God, when the vine is operating in your life and you connect it properly to the vine, my God, no matter where you drop there, no matter where you at, no matter what type of service you're in, no matter where God plants you, it could be in a desert, you will be able to find God when your spirit is alive. Are y'all with me so far? So God needs to reveal himself to some of us that's been saved for a long time. We need to get back we acclimated with the vine. We got to go back to the source. Some of us may have started out dependent on the source, but God has blessed us with a good job. We got some good 401k. We got good benefits now. We didn't went from riding around in a Honda. Now we got a Benz or whatever, and now we don't depend on the source no more. Now we don't pray like we used to. Now we don't read like we used to. Now we don't fast like we used to. We pick and choose when we come to church. We pick and choose when we obey, obey the scriptures. See, see, so God said, okay, I need to reveal. They need to have a head-on collision with me again. They need, I need to snatch them back a little bit. Come on, somebody. I need to refocus them a little bit. But there's a blessing in the storm. Are y'all with me so far? Mm. The disciples did not recognize him. Are you recognizing God tonight? Can you sense God in a different flow going on for Christ Church? I know my pastors know that pastors being very strategic for a reason tonight, that the flow and everything is different. But can you still sense God without all the noise, without all the passion, without all the screaming and hollering that I sometimes, can you still sense God and say, okay, let me get some revelation tonight. He's in a different flow tonight. God got him in a different place right now. And so therefore, let me tune in. Let me come in and get laser focused so I don't miss this fresh rhema that's coming up out of my pastor's spirit tonight. See, a lot of people look for God in the noise. They look for him in the light. They look for him on the mountain. They don't look for him in the dark places. They don't look for him in the storms. They don't look for him in the crisis. <laughs> I'm trying to train y'all that when you begin to clam, ooh, come on, Pastor Janice, when you begin to clam, here come storms. Here come trials. When God begins to enlarge your territory, Antoinette, here come trials. Here come storms. Quit looking at everything you're going through as the devil because it ain't. Every level, as we say, brings a new devil. But the problem that we have as believers is that we're not prepared for the next level. We want the next level, but when God starts taking us up the mountain, we do everything to self-sabotage and go back down to the mountain. Because it's easier, my God, to exist in chaos than it is to live in freedom. For some of us, we don't know what it's like to live in freedom, so we stay in chaos. When a pastor trying to pull you up out of vision, trying to pull you up, my God, pull you up out of Egypt, pull you up out of that mess, my God, you, 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 you self-sabotage because all you know is chaos. All you know is trials. All you know is bondage. God is trying to snatch you as a believer up out of all that stuff. As I talked to men at the Monday Night Discipleship, discipleship, my God, that God wants to affect, my God, your whole being. God wants to impact and affect your whole life. That means your finances, your mind, your marriage, your children. He wants to impact every area of your life. He wants your body healthy. He wants your mind healthy. He wants your emotions healthy. That's it. He wants you physically healthy. He wants you to look like and operate like kings, yeah. not just in word. He wants you to live like kings and queens. Whatever that does, it gives him glory and it advances his kingdom yeah. right. when you look like him, yeah. when you operate like him. Mm -hmm. And so we got to quit self-sabotage and want to stay in Egypt. Again, it's easier to exist in chaos than it is to live in freedom. Many people don't know how to handle freedom. You know who taught me that, uh, M Mother Thomas? The late doctor. Many people cannot handle real freedom. That's why they always go back to Egypt. They don't know what it's like to have a good, a good man. They don't know what it's like to have a real good woman. They don't know what it's like to have money in the bank. They don't know what it's like to have real peace. And so there's sometimes we would create our own chaos because it's more comfortable for us to stay in mess. 
And then when you get an untraditional pastor like me that's pushing you and pushing you and pushing you and pulling you and trying to get you to elevate, my God, you self-sabotage. He too hard. Now, I'm just trying to get you to operate like who you are. Yeah. When did the Bible say that he want us bound up? When the Bible says we quote whom the son set free is free indeed. Right. So I guess I'm supposed to, as a pastor, let you stay bound? I'm never supposed to encourage you. I'm never supposed to motivate you. Your sister or brother is never supposed to encourage you and motivate you to get free. Yeah. And some of us, we'd rather stay around somebody who ain't free than get around somebody who is free. Yeah. Because we get around somebody that is free, we got to make a decision. Am I going to yeah. be free? I'm going to stay bound. Yeah. And so I'd rather stay bound, so I'll stay over here. Because yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we don't see the blessing in the storm. Yeah. Just trying to take you up the mountain and doing it very strategic. In order to go up the mountain, God got to reveal himself to some of us, even some of us, some of us that's been saved for quite some time. Because when you've been saved, as I told y'all, one of the greatest enemies to, to success is past success. And so sometimes we, sometimes, I didn't say you, sometimes we can get, my God, intoxicated off of what we have accomplished already. And we feel like we ain't got no more work to do. You, we, some of us live like I have already heard. Some of us live like we have already heard, job well done, my good and faithful servant. So God said, okay, I need to re-reveal. They need to get reacclimated to me. So here come a storm. But he came to them with a word of peace. He said, be of good cheer, y'all. He came to them in the midst of the storm, my God, with a word of power. He said, it is I. He first said, it is be peace, be of good cheer. He came to them with a word of power, meaning it is I. And he came to them with a word of potential, be not afraid. God is telling you, my God, don't be afraid, I'm with you. I'm right there. I allowed this storm. And that what I didn't allow, I was used for my glory. Yeah. See what I'm trying to say? So we got to get to the point where we surrender and submit and say, okay, God, I caused the storm. I made this decision. You told me to stay away from her, but I went back. You told me to stay. Yeah. I, I, I knew I wasn't supposed to accept that job, but I did. Now, okay, God, I repent. Yeah. Now have your way. Turn what seems like a curse into a blessing. God can do that. God can do that. He could turn a curse into a blessing, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> Be not afraid. You can't clown the mountain if you're afraid. You can't come out of situations and circumstances if you are afraid. You can't let fear dominate you. You can't be like Gideon and be in fear when you should have been in faith. Now, do we have a tendency to be afraid? I'm afraid about a whole lot of stuff, but I'm not going to let it paralyze me and stop me from doing what God has called me to do, church. Y'all don't know, my God, the, the Gethsemane I go through my mind before I walk out here on Sunday and on Wednesday. Even when I stand before my men on Mondays at the men's discipleship. Every time I get before the people, my God, I go through a Gethsemane, a crushing. That's why you see me pacing, screaming, and shouting, my God, because I'm trying to get this thing and get ready to do what God has called me to do. It ain't easy. So I'm not telling y'all, my God, that, that you ain't seeing us. Not good. Everybody got some level of fur. You got good fur and bad fur. You should have some reverence for God. You should have a healthy fear for God. Good fear will make you respect God. Good fear will make you worship God. Good fear will make you bow down to God. Good fear will make you not overstep them boundaries. My God, having good reverence for God, my God, to keep you from doing habitual sin. Don't get me started. I'm trying to stay in this river right here. She will try to say, but when you got bad fear, bad fear paralyzes you. It, 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 it neutralizes God's will in your life. And then you find yourself wondering 40 years when you should have been 40 years that way, you 40 years this way. Yeah. See, you got to separate, got to differentiate, my God, what's good for and bad for. Are y'all with me so far? But God came and spoke to them in the midst of the storm. Be peace, be of good cheer. Power, it is I. Potential, be not afraid. The storms of life have the potential to reveal the Savior. Storms. Is God trying to reveal himself to you in the storm and you're looking for him in the light? You're looking for him in the peace? God came to them and said, be, be encouraged in the midst of a storm. He didn't wait till they got out of the storm and then say, now be encouraged. He spoke to them. Ooh, somebody need to catch that in the midst of a storm, man. God is trying to reveal himself to you. He ain't trying to reveal church to you. He trying to reveal himself. My God, he trying to reveal the kingdom. The Bible says, repent, Jesus said, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Don't you know when Christ shows up anywhere in your life, that means the whole embodiment of the kingdom has showed up? So think about the kingdom. There ain't no sickness. There ain't no diseases. There ain't no lack. There ain't no poverty and none of that stuff in the kingdom. We have all that afforded to us. All we got to do is activate it. 
All we got to do is get the right key to unstore and unlock it and stuff, my God. Somebody say release. Release. Oh, my God. Ask God to release his kingdom in your life. Mm. Then you operate different. Then when God releases kingdom, that what is on top of you gets up under you. Learn how to walk on your circumstances and situations. It's a mindset. Boy, if y'all cut me open, if you cut me open, and ooh, my God, and God revealed to you what's going on, you're like, how is he standing? He should have went back by now. He's going through too much. He's been through too much. It's the price. God reminded me, you told me that you was going on to see what the end of a saved life going to be like. Have y'all forgot some of the vows? <laughs> I said, have y'all forgot some of the vows you made to God? Get me out this time, God, I'm going to go hard for you. If you fix it this time, God, I'm going to serve you. If you do this, you bless me with an with a, with a, with a, with a, with a, with a increase, I'm going to tie. You ain't done none of the stuff, okay? Here come a storm. And I thank God for the storms. My own personal storms in my life because it keeps me fresh. It keeps me on my face. It keeps me in this office, my God, laying, my God, in God's presence. Keep me flipping them pages. I thank God. If it was always good, my God, I don't know if my hunger would be where it's at today. You need, my God, trials. You need tests, my God, because it keeps you, my God, hungry. It keeps you thirsty, my God. It was good for me that I was afflicted. Some of us, my God, has been so good to us, we didn't lost our passion for God. Yeah, we didn't lie. You pass you like, no, I ain't, it ain't me. Mm, come on, are you with me so far? Testing, 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 testing. Do you know God for real? Do you know him? So you got to get past knowing what the words say and know him. And when you know him, you know that he said, I'll never leave you, nor abandon you, nor forsake you. When you know him, you know that, uh, you can stand in Philippians 4.13, which says, I can do all things through Christ. So that what you feel weak about, you can say, I need strength, God. And so then you begin to tap into God's resources, into God's strength. God has a way of breaking us so that we can begin to tap into his strength. See what I'm trying to say? Some of us is too strong. I'm talking to myself. Some of our wheels are too strong. I'm talking to myself. And so God got to break your will so you can become, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. There's blessings in the storm. There's blessings in the storm. Mm, mm, mm. Storms also, write this down, they refine the disciple. Whew. They refine the disciple. When Peter heard that it was the Lord, Peter wanted to join Jesus in walking on the water. Jesus simply told Peter to come. Some of you really do need to come. I don't care how long you've been saved. I don't care how gifted you are. But you really need to come. You need to come and drink from the well again. You need a refreshing. You need another touch. I've been seeing that throughout reading the one-year Bible, my God, in the New Testament. Every, everybody it just said when Jesus touched them, they was healed. It's the, that's, that's, the sim, that's the physical touch, my God. Symbolically, some of y'all need to be touched all over again. If you let them touch that sickness, if you let them touch that addiction, let them touch that oppression, let them touch that depression, you need to come so he can touch you. He ain't going to touch you back there. He's going to touch you at the altar. Peter, come. Jesus said, if you draw nigh to me, I'll draw nigh to you. You got to do something, baby, other than to sit in your seat. The Bible said, if you draw, if you come nigh, if you come, God said, and when you come, I'm coming. When you take a step, I'm taking one. When you move this way, I'm coming your way. Well, do something to get God's attention. Do something to get God's attention. Sometimes you got to look like a fool to get God's attention. Uh, you got to sit on the side of the road and scream, Jesus, have mercy on me. Jesus, have mercy on me. Be quiet, be quiet. They said, the more he told me be quiet, the more he shouted, Jesus, have mercy on me. Why is he acting all like that? Why is she screaming like that? Jesus, have because they want to be free. When you've been bound up so long, you'll look like a fool to get free. Oh, this ain't trying to be cool up off of here, baby. I ain't trying to impress you. I'm trying to help you, my God. Jesus, have mercy. Do anybody need Jesus to have mercy on them? I said, do anybody need Jesus to have mercy on them? Sitting on the side of the road and life is passing you by. And you too cool and you too cute, my God, to cry out to the Lord. It don't take all that. 
and week after week and year after year, you still bound up to the same thing that God gave you dominion over. But it don't take all that. Please. Jesus, have mercy on me. Free people, free people are strange to people that's bound. Oof. Free people are strange to people that's still bound. Hi, Pastor. Hi, Chief. Free people are strange. Delivered people are strange. Healed people physically and emotionally, mentally, are strange to people that's bound. Because they want the very thing that they're getting away from. But what they don't do, they don't come. Oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah. They follow and look and expect uh -huh. from a distance. Yeah, 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 yeah. When all God says, just come. That's it. The same thing I did for him, the same thing I did for her, I want to do for you, but you won't come. Oh, my, <laughs> my God, let me hurry up and finish this out for y'all. We find me, Lord. Somebody say, we find me, Lord. Find me, Lord. Notice I didn't say Christian, I said disciple. Mm -hmm. They we find a disciple. A Christian talk Christ, a disciple walks Christ. A lot of talkers with few walkers. Mm. God told Peter to come. Peter obeyed, and he too walked on the water. Jesus used the storm as a means of helping Peter grow in his faith. God is trying to develop you. James said, think it not strange when fiery trials has come upon you. God is trying to grow you. That's why there's blessings in the storm. Look for God in the storm. Look to develop in the storm. Look to be more holy. Look for God to build your faith and so forth. There's so many benefits, my God, to storms and trials and tribulation. And so all I'm trying to accomplish tonight is that all this stuff that's going on in your life and my life, my God, God is trying to execute. God is trying to purge. God is trying to develop. God is trying to grow, my God. So quit being so depressed, oppressed, and suppressed, my God, behind something that God is trying to use to help you. Thank you. It took all this time to get y'all to agree with the pastor tonight. <laughs> Storms refine you. They purify you. To the pure, they see things as pure. To the defiled, they see everything as defiled. What lenses are you looking through? How are you seeing the Constitution? How are you seeing the Savior? How are you seeing your pastors? How are you seeing your sisters? How are you looking at? What lenses? What lenses are you looking at? Ask yourself, I'm looking through what? Is they clean? To the pure. Think about the scripture. They see things as pure. They interpret things as pure. They analyze things as pure. Even when it's dark, they can see God. Yeah. 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 To the pure, that means your way of thinking. Connected to the vine. Drawing strength and nourishment from the source. And so where other person may see is defiled and, and an opportunity to run, you see it's an opportunity to move forward. Dr. Miles, was, me and my wife was down there Friday, my God, and Dr. Miles uh, was talking about overcoming crisis, and he said in the Japanese uh, verbiage, they don't even have the word crisis. Like we have crisis, we say crisis in our, in our English. The word crisis in, in Japanese is opportunity. So, 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 so the doctor said, when, 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 when something happened, that all the, the Japanese say, opportunity, 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 you know, that crisis, that crisis, what is that? You say, cr opportunity, 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 somebody say, opportunity, 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 everything you're going through, opportunity, 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 everything you're going through, opportunity, opportunity, opportunity. Even them habits, opportunity, 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 house burned down, opportunity, opportunity, husband acting crazy, opportunity, opportunity, wife tripping, opportunity, kids tripping, opportunity, boss tripping, everything, dogs tripping, opportunity, 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 opportunity. So we place crisis with opportunity. Every time you're going through something, every time something don't line up, just say opportunity, opportunity. Opportunity what? For you to move up the mountain. Opportunity for God to get the glory. Opportunity for you to grow. Opportunity for you to expand. We crying out and praying, asking God to do all the stuff. And so therefore, when he starts sending stuff and allowing stuff, my God, we self-sabotage. No, it's an opportunity. Everything's an opportunity. I came tonight with an expectation. I came tonight to give God some glory. I'm going to work tomorrow with an opportunity. Look to move up the chain. Oh, my God, get out of my way because I'm moving up, baby. Everything's an opportunity. My hang-ups is an opportunity. My habits is an opportunity. 
My former pain is an opportunity. My former mistakes is an opportunity for God to get the glory out of it. Oh my God. Opportunity, opportunity, opportunity. Thank you, doctor. I ain't gonna never forget you, baby. Rest in peace, Mother Ruth and Dr. Miles. Still impacting, going off of Christ, and they sitting high right now. Oh my God, I'm gonna close it out with this. Opportunity, somebody say opportunity. Oh my God, Mama, I just looked at you, even what you're going through with your, with your opportunity. Because see, everybody else that walked up here, and maybe somebody that's falling behind, and that's your opportunity to witness to them. Because if you'd have been walking, you'd have walked right past them. Oh, sorry. So I got to walk a little slower because I got to catch this one that's falling. Uh, and maybe one of the sisters, maybe one of the sisters that they got, they got bit by a python, so they ain't running like they should run. They falling from a distance, so she get to walk with her. She get to say, okay, opportunity. Hey, sister, what's going on? I know that she ain't up there with them no more. Uh, you you want to talk and I pray with you? Huh? Come on. Opportunity, that's a mouth. You got bad credit, you got opportunity to turn it around allow God to give you good credit. Oh, they say, I can't get no amens like that. <laughs> oh, my God. Let me finish this last one. I'm going to go. Good flow tonight. Storms. Oh, my God. Storms can help us rise above our circumstances. Storms. Peter walked on his storm. Storms. God is teaching you and I how to rise. How to rise. Somebody say rise. rise. You and I will know that we are developing when we start walking on it instead of let it walk on it, us. Yeah. If you constantly fell in to the same storm, the same trials, that means it has dominion over you and you do not have dominion over it. And so you got to say the next time, my God, I go through this situation, or next time this test come, it's an opportunity for me to rise. Yeah. It's an opportunity for me to rise. Are y'all with me so far? The storms of life will focus our faith. I'm about to. The storms of life will focus our faith if we will allow them to. God can use the difficult days to teach us more about himself and to help us grow. I'm going to close right here. I have learned who God is, not just from reading his word, but some of the things that God has done in my life that treatment centers couldn't do, my multi-millionaire brother, John Starks, could not do financially. He took the heart of the judge, I mean the governor, turned his heart for me. I'm saying this because God was revealing himself, Tanya, to me. And as I taught y'all, some people, as God bless you and do things, it should increase your tenacity. Yeah. It should increase your love. Yeah. It should increase your hunger for him. But when God began to unlock things and begin to do things for people, instead of them falling more in love with God, they back up on God. And they wait for the next circumstance, situation to come. But when God began to reveal himself to me, Sister Jackie, began to do things that I know that man couldn't do. When God delivered me, ooh, down, down, when God delivered me, Oh, my God. When God gave me a pardon from the same governor that wouldn't sign my parole after the parole board says yes, two years in a row, let him out. And when the governor, the same governor, gave me a full pardon and I didn't have to pay a dime. When God blessed me, my, ooh, when God, I'm, I'm trying to help you, my God. When the way, ooh, Janice, my God. Thank you, Lord. Somebody say thank you, Lord. Mm. Every storm, every storm. I'm through. Every storm. Yes, Lord. Um, I have learned to find God in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm able to walk through stuff that y'all know I'm going through and don't miss a beat. Because I know the scripture, I ain't just quoting all things are working together for the good. Every storm is an opportunity. Every situation and every circumstance, I've seen God move. I've seen God do the impossible. And all that has done is increase my love for God. Blessings is in the storm. God reveals himself. God refines the disciple. Storms has a way of proving who you are. 
And write this last one down. Storms also reminds the disciples. Some of us need to be reminded tonight. Reminded tonight. Look at that. We find and remind it tonight. Peter wanted to walk on water like Jesus. He put the Lord to the test and stepped out on the waves. I want to read this to you. However, he soon took his eyes off the Lord. And when he did, church, he found himself in trouble. So I want to say this to y'all. Write these three down. Be courageous, because Peter was. Say what you will. He denied him three times. But he was courageous. In the midst of what you're going through, you got to be courageous. Even that what you don't understand tonight, be courageous. Even those that's watching by way of social media, be courageous in the midst of the storm that you are going through. Peter was courageous. Peter was bold enough, my God, to take God at his word. Who, my God, are you bold enough tonight to take God at his word and come and get reacclimated with the Savior? Be courageous. That's a mindset. Whoever get the mind, get the life. Write that down. Whoever get the mind, get the life. Do God have your mind? Because God is telling you to come. And when you make up your mind to be courageous, Dominique, then you got to get out the boat. So the second thing you need to do is get out the boat. <laughs> You'll never see God operate if you stay in the boat. Do you got a boat mentality tonight? You won't see God move. You won't see God do the impossible if you play it safe. People that stays in the boat with a boat mentality, they always want to play it safe. They ain't got real faith. Real faith will launch you out there. <laughs> oh my God, for real faith to cause you to take chances would make people like, why in the world did he do that? Why in the world is she doing that? How? I'm courageous and I don't have a boat mentality. Real faith will launch you into your next season. Some of y'all, you can't launch because you ain't got real solidified faith. Don't stay at the mountain. Get out the boat. And move to the next level. Write this one down. Thank you, Lord. And when you get out the boat, after being courageous, keep your eyes on the Lord. So that means as God begin to bless you, God begin to turn your circumstances, situations around, don't get intoxicated. Don't act like you don't need God no more. Don't act like you don't take what it took to get the blessing. Yes, yes. Keep your eyes on the Lord. For some of y'all that asked me, and many of you have, how did you do it? I ain't never took my eyes ever off the Lord. From the day the Lord saved me, April the 30th, 1995, I ain't never, ever allowed nothing in my life. And I've been through some hell as a Christian. And I'm using that word very strong. I have not allowed nothing. Because see, you in tune, son. You've been listening and watching. I have never allowed nothing since I gave my life to Christ to ever cause me to take my eyes off the Lord. That's why I'm free today. That's why I'm healed today. That's why I'm focused today. That's why I'm standing in greatness today because I never took my eyes off the Lord. In spite of everybody misunderstanding me, in spite of everybody counting me out, in spite of everybody lying, misunderstanding, I never took my eyes off the Lord. That's why y'all here today. That's why y'all blessed today. That's why you free today. That's why you free today. That's why you free today. That's why you respect me again as your father. Never take your eyes off the Lord. Never get intoxicated off the praise of people. Because people will say, Hosanna, and then crucify. I'm with you. And then walk off and leave you in the midst of the storm. Ah! Keep your eyes. I just liberate you. Little Jackie, did you catch me? Keep your eyes on Jesus. If you want to stay clean and sober, keep your eyes on Jesus. If you want to walk on mountains, keep your eyes on Jesus. If you want to maintain your freedom, keep your eyes. On Jesus. If you want to get free, you got to come. And then when you come, you got to keep your eyes on Jesus. I just wanted to, through the Spirit of the Living God, to encourage you tonight because I understand that many of my sons 
and daughters are going through some storms. But there's blessings in the storms. You got to be able to locate God in the valley. You got to be able to locate God in darkness. You got to be able to locate God in pain. You got to be able to locate God when you don't understand. You got to be say, God, I ain't felt your presence in a long time. So then you got to be willing to do what my son is getting ready to do and lay out in his presence and say, God, let me feel you one more time. Touch me just one more time, God. Help me just one more time, God. It's me, God. Cross my mind over. It's me, God. Help me, God. Oh, my God. You got to be willing, my God, to come. With every head bow, every head bow, I want to talk to a different type of people tonight. Thank you, Lord, for every storm. Purify. Refine and remind. Reveal yourself. Reveal yourself to the people of God. I'm going to do something that's uh, a little bit different. I'm going to ask. If storms has got on top of you, but then you just learn that something that on, that's on top of you shouldn't be on top of you because of just what God revealed to you through the scripture tonight. I want you to get up and come. If you have storms that's on top of you and you've learned tonight that these things should not be on top of you because of what you learned tonight, then you should come tonight. Be courageous. Get out the boat. Come keep your eyes on the Lord. A little bit different flow tonight, but it was good. I also want to talk to some of the people that's been with going off for quite some time. Because I see a lot of people up here that just now start coming to the campus since we've been here, but it's the people that's out there. Yeah, I'm talking to you. That's been here. I know and you know what's on top of you. You got to be down at the altar. I don't care if you're a porter, and I don't care if you're a greeter. You should be down at the altar. No one is above this word, including the one that just preached it. We got stuff going on that God is ready for you to bring to him so it can get up under you and he can get on top of it. Fear. Some of my sons and daughters is in fear. You should be down at the altar. There's things that God showed you concerning your necks and you're terrified about it. And you're trying to say, God, is that really you? You're trying to talk yourself out of it. You ought to be here. God has asked you to do some things that you, oh my God, <laughs> Ooh, she kid, I love, I know that it's God, but you have not done it. That's why we got to say, God, forgive me for the sins of omission and commission. Uh, don't you know it's disobedient to do something that God told you to do and you're not doing it? That's disobedience right there. Uh, don't justify Say, I'm trying to figure out if it's God. You know if it's God or not. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I'm talking to the seasoned and the young. Thank you, Lord. If you need to be delivered from any habit or hang up, whatever that may be tonight, you ought to be here. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm. I got to say this because the Spirit just released me. You know you're struggling at the house. You're struggling. You're wondering, should I or should I not? God, is it? Shoulda. I'm not supposed to, but I'm tired. Mm. Help me, Lord, not to make the wrong decision concerning my home life. I'm following the Holy Ghost. If that's you, you ought to come because God is talking to you. I know He is. I know He is. I know He is. She da 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 ba she ke da ba. But we don't want nobody to know that we have having marital problems. So we'll sit there and stay stuck. And say, I'm going to work this out between me and God. And it ain't worked yet. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Sometimes I got to be transparent for you to get free. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Quit worrying about what man think. It's, you, tonight is the night to get free, baby. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.